Yes, microphone is on. Hey, YouTubers. Okay, okay, it seems okay. Sorry about that, guys. I really just got to wait to make sure that everything's popping on. Hey, YouTubers, how you doing? I'm Jacques Gaines from Jacques Gaines Photography. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a new purchase I made and why I think uh, uh, there's a comparison between these two lenses. They're both zoom lenses, so I think there's a comparison that should be made on these two cameras. So we're going to talk about that today. Which one I think you should buy between the 5140 or the 55 to 200 and let's keep on watching cool so but first i just want to tell you guys that jacques photography is about the journey getting the shot and not only getting the shot if you can smash that like button subscribe i would definitely definitely appreciate it also i'm getting some great feedback on my boudoir shoot with meg it went really well we had a lot of fun uh it's the first time i do sort of a boudoir thing and it was really cool and i did it with such a great girl i mean she's so cool meg is such a cool girl and also i want you guys to check out some of my blogs and vlogs they're kind of cool and i think a lot of people would really appreciate them i just got a comment on community one guy told me that uh, you're so busy buying gear that you don't really sit there and actually do um uh, photography but if you check on my site you look at some of the playlists look at my photo shoots and a lot of other stuff so you'll find some really really cool stuff so that's all I wanted to say for that uh, a couple of other things I just wanted to mention to you guys is I'm really excited because what happens is the national synchronized swimming team is about to do some stuff and we're supposed to film uh, some stuff so obviously I have to go underwater to do that and for that reason I have to get underwater housing and as anyone who shopped for underwater housing will realize that it can be a ridiculously expensive uh, but I found a great little little solution I'm just gonna say it for two seconds guys it's the underwater housing by a company called Miyeki I think it's Miyeki and uh, it's made for the G7X2 believe it or not and I looked at it and the price was pretty I think it was in the 100 high 100s and uh, it was uh, definitely a great price and I will be giving you guys a review on this thing if ever you want to do this uh, what's really cool about the G7X a lot of people don't realize that this camera first of all for stills it's amazing and also for actual video it is fantastic it's like one of the number one blogging and vlogging video cameras out there but it, this housing right here, this gigantic housing, is made for this camera. And it's pretty darn amazing. Listen, I'm not going to get too much into it because the video is not about that. But I just wanted to tell you guys that I stay tuned for that. I will be talking about the underwater housing. I'll be filming swimmers, filming swimmers underwater. So it's going to be kind of cool. I'm going to see how that works as well. Now, today we're going to talk about weather. Hello from Italy. Uh, I was about to say hola, but that's Spanish. Hello from Italy is... Uh, is it ciao? Anyways, I don't know if it's like in French where you'd see bonjour for both leaving and, and coming. I don't know what you do for ciao. But anyways, tell me what it is, Ruben. I just want to talk a bit about uh, that big choice. And the reason I want to talk about this choice between the 55 to 140. This is the 50, no, sorry, the 50 to 140 or the 55 to 200 zoom lens is because... The choice becomes quite hard if you actually look at the facts. However, if you just look at cost, the choice is very, very easy. Here, let me just go check on uh, B&H Photo. Here, let me go screen plus me. I just want to show you guys what sort of prices we're talking about. Uh, if you get the 50 to 140, you're talking about $14.99. But if you get the 55 to 200, it's $5.99. So we are talking uh, almost a thousand bucks difference. Therefore, a lot of people out there will say to themselves, well, hey, it's very, very simple. I'm just going to go get the cheaper uh, lens. Well, the argument is sort of true. And in the case of Fuji, because of the quality overall of both of these lenses, lots of times that argument will fall true. So I will tell you right away, for a lot of you guys that are very cost conscious, it is definitely a great lens. And with the 55-200, you will be satisfied in terms of IQ. But for certain little things, these little tiny 
aspects of the lenses might make you want to go and buy one of these, the 50 to 140. And that's what I'm here to talk to you guys a bit today. Now, here's a couple of observations I just wanted to make on both of these lenses. Let's start off and I'll tell you right away that the 50 to 200 I've, I had for about six months. I sold and I got the 50 to 140. I'll be talking about my decision and why I made it. You'll realize it as we go along. But the 50 to 200 is an excellent, excellent lens. It's great quality. I'm gonna shoot you guys to this right here, which is the screen plus me of a photo shoot I did with Angie. This was inside with existing light and you can zoom into these shots. We'll wait till they zoom in and you're talking great, fantastic quality. This is the 55 to 200 guys that I'm using here. Now, what happens on these shots is that I am getting a lot of light. Uh, I'm getting a lot of light here. Therefore, it is uh, pretty darn good. If you look at these and you pixel peep a bit, you'll see that the image is like right around here on the bra and just down on the chest. The quality is extremely sharp. Um, in terms of layman, and I think that's also important to mention, is what I do. Like, I am an amateur, serious amateur photographer who actually gets paid for some gigs. So I am professional, uh, but if you want to get really, really technical, this is not the place to be. You might want to go to another station. I can get into the technical uh, as much as I possibly can, but at one point, I just look at general impressions. But... Suffice to say, I just wanted to tell you guys that my observations of owning the 55-200, it is a sharp lens. It is a sharp lens. It's really good once you get the exposure right. And that's what we have to talk about. Now, the Fuji non-50-140 to f2.8, I would strongly advise you guys, if you want to get a good analysis of that lens, go over to Angry Photographer's uh, uh, channel. He has quite substantial analysis on the 50 to 140 and he is right when he says that the 50 to 140 in terms of general optical quality if you start pixel peeping in really a lot you do definitely definitely have a better quality lens the image quality is better by how much that's another thing i you know i i definitely cannot tell you uh, to what extent but I can tell you that both lenses are excellent, but the 50 to 140 is definitely sharper. Hello, Michael, how are you? Cool. And yes, it is chow, that's cool. <laughs> I just found out. Okay, now let's talk about the zoom range. I think both lenses have great zoom ranges. Let's talk about their equivalents. 55 to 200 is 82.5 to 300. You're being able to zoom in a bit more on the 35 millimeter equivalent. And the 50 to 140, also a great zoom range, 75 to 200, 35 millimeter equivalent. They're both great zoom ranges, and they're a zoom range you can use all over the place. Fashion, portraits, run and gun, show photography, event photography, weddings, they pop all over the place. So for both, they both cover the bases. You're a bit tighter with the 55 to 200. On the Fujinon 55 to 200, it is relatively compact for a zoom. Now, it still is a big zoom. If you compare the equivalent, like the 55 to 210, I believe Sony has, um, we might not be talking the same image quality, but it's even smaller. The Sony is even smaller. But the 55 to 200 is relatively compact and a lot more compact than this right here. Let me just shoot to full screen so you guys can see. Now, I'd say if I actually put the, uh, I don't have it with me because I sold it, but the 50, to 200 would come up to about here and the barrel itself would be a lot smaller and you can see also here um, that uh, the barrel is uh, 72 millimeter on the 50 to 140 and 62 millimeter on the 55 to 200 so you're talking a smaller lens so these are the types of factors that are going to factor in when you are talking about these two lenses physically, in terms of ergonomics. Uh, now, here is a big one. Here's a biggie. And it uh, weighs in the balance for what I do. The variable F wall closing. On the Fujinon 55 to 200, your F closes down. And it closes down 
relatively quick. I think that's something a lot of photography channels don't talk about enough is the fact that your F exposure can actually close down quick. Let's say it's 3.5 and you're at 55. Well, and at the end of the zoom range, it's at 4.8, like on the 55, 200. If it, if at 80, it, it's already at 4.8 or close to 4.8. Well, it becomes a bit less useful that lens. On the Fuji 9 50 to 140, it's f2.8. Hence the bigger glass, the bigger optics, a lens that weighs a lot more, a lot more. 995 grams versus the 580. So I just wanted to mention that. So variable f will weigh in the balance of whether you're getting this or not. Uh, now I also mentioned the lens, uh, the lens, uh, uh, elements here and i will show you this i'm just going to show you this i again i'm not the super most technical guy but you have 23 elements in 16 groups including five extra low dispersion elements and one super extra low dispersion element i can tell you right away from the shots i have done so far on the 50 to 140 which i can't show you because they're for a client uh but uh they, they it's like tack 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 sharp it's ridiculous. Like I zoom into this thing and I go, wow, crazy. And on the Fujinon, you're 14 elements in 10 groups. Includes one is spherical and two extra low dispersion. I think that most likely the optics and the amount of optics that go into this camera weigh in the balance as well. Now, let's go into the feature comparison. This is where we start to decide which one you should go out and buy. Should you spend that one thousand dollars more to get a lens now i wanted to go through them because for most people these are the things that are the most important thing to talk about one both have ex excellent build quality i have you know what i can tell you right now honestly they're both well made and the I cannot see that much of a difference in terms of build quality between this and the 55 to 200. The 55 to 200 is a lot smaller. Uh, build quality is, I'll just show you the front element there. It's just a beauty. I love elements. I love to look at elements, but build quality for both are basically at par. They're as good bo in both cases. So I just wanted to mention that you, you're not going to get an up on build quality. Uh, now, here's here's something that might change. Your focus speed is Ice Age squirrel quick. I mean, it is quick on the 50 to 140. Very fast. Very, very fast. And uh, it has what's called a triple linear motor. Again, go over to uh, Angry Photographer's uh, uh, website to check that out. He's the best guy to do that, and he will explain that. On the 55 to 200, the focus speed is acceptable. I will say acceptable. I have managed to deal with it. The way I have dealt with it is mostly going into the body itself and doing a couple of focus uh, adjustments on autofocus. You, you have a lot of adjustments on the X-T2 where you can actually decide how the lens and the camera are going to focus and it will optimize for whatever you're doing. I really suggest you to do that. If you buy the 55 to 200, it'll solve a lot of problems in terms of focusing speed. That's all I wanted to mention for that. Okay, OIS, optical image stabilization, with, uh, uh, is on par with the great optical image stabil stabilization on both these cameras. Again, because of the amount of elements, I think it is one of the reasons why this camera right here is probably, uh, sorry, the 50 to 140 is a bit more expensive than the uh, 55 to 200. Because you're trying to stabilize uh, uh, more elements, that might be the case. Now, I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Uh, that. I wanted to mention that. Before we go to which to choose, I just want to answer a couple of questions. The 50 to 140 is much faster. Works great in sports. Yes, it does, Ruben. And that's what we're going to get to talking about right now. Michael says, indeed. Yes. So here we go. Now, I just want to mention here. Now, which to choose? We can go through a discussion on this forever. Now, I'm going to go through my list. You know what? I'm going to try to... Give me a second here, guys. I'm just going to add a source. Device, video, Logitech, Brio. Put myself in there. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple of things because 
a lot of it has to do with my personal philosophy and you guys got to decide what you think and how you feel about this. But I believe that any sports photographer who has to shoot indoors at any point in time has to get the 50 to 140. As soon as you use the 50 to 200 and you're going to be open, you're going to be wide open quite a bit. And when you're wide open, you want that F to stay there when you zoom in and frame for another shot. If your F is going to change, you're going to lose your shot. It's not even, it's not even a consideration. So for most sports photographers that want to shoot indoors, I think it's the case. You have to get the 50 to 140. You have to spend that $1,000 more. You just got to. Sports photography, now in the 55 to 200, it could be an option if you do sports events that are outside. Most of the time, overcast skies, even dark, you will have enough light with your 3.5 to 4.8 F. Uh, now, will you be able to get the bokeh or that 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 feeling you want? Maybe with a, the slower sort of, uh, the slower autofocus, you might not be able to get that. Therefore, it's something to consider. Uh, it can do the job. I think the 55 to 200 can do the job. Can it do it really well? I think the 50 to 140 will nail the job for sure. Uh, the 50 to 140 for event and wedding photographers, that's a, that's a no-brainer. It really is a no-brainer. Uh, events involve, wedding photography involves going inside, getting into a spot where it's dark and all of a sudden the uh, bride wants a shot underneath this thing that's pitch black dark you're stuck with that f so the one of the big factors is the f that you're dealing with so if you're with the 55 to 200 and you have your f and you're closing down wedding shots and stuff like that where you want the background blurred and you want to focus in on the wedding couple it might not be the best thing to go out and get the 55 to 200 though for candid photographers now i say candid photographers now the thing is this, guys, with candid photography. Depends on your philosophy. If you're old school, you will not even think of using this lens for street or candid photography just because you believe in using a 35, 23 millimeter fixed focal and going out there and taking your shots. I'm not that way. I believe in shooting a shot from very far to get my candid shot. The 55 to 200 is a great bet. It's more mobile. It's smaller. It's not as big. It's not as evident. People don't see that you have it. So for those people who actually share my philosophy, candid photography and street, great idea. Go and get it. The 55 to 200 is probably a better bet than the 50 to 140. Now let's go over to the 50 to 140 for portraiture. Portraiture in all cases will be better. 2.8 is even a bit closed down. I mean, it is kind of fun when you can get to 1.8 and 1.4 when you're doing portraiture. But it is a great camera to have if you're doing run-and-gun portraiture out there in the field. It's kind of a cool, cool thing. Someone just wrote me, Mario, I'm jealous. You're in Costa Rica, and I want to go there. I want to live there. Pura Vida, man. Pura Vida. Oh, man, I just love that place. Back to what I was saying. So in the case of portraiture, I think you also, it's a no-brainer. You have to spend the extra money to get the 50 to 140. When you're going to be doing post-processing, you want that tack, tack sharpness that you're going to get with the 50 to 140. Now, the 55 to 200, I'm saying portraiture in some cases. Again, if you're outside, if you have a lot of light, you can use it. It's a great thing to use, and it'll work fine. It'll do the trick. Um, now, also remember that in sports photography, with the 50 to 200, what you lose in F speed, you gain in focal length. Like it, it, I mean, 200 times 1.5, it does give you a 300 millimeter focal length at the zoom, which is quite fun to have. It's like really fun to have when you're shooting shots. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Now, wildlife, let's get into wildlife here. Um, I think in the case of wildlife, both have their advantages. One, because it, the 50 to 140 is fast on focus. And with wildlife, you need that fast focus. Uh, with the 55 to 200, what's really nice is, again, that focal length. You have a larger, longer focal length. You can go in closer. But 
we might not want to be talking about the 50 to 140 or the 50 to 200 for wildlife and you might want be wanting to think think of getting the 100 to 400 that next level and go up so i just wanted to mention that that if you are thinking of it for wildlife uh you might want to just stop as if especially if you say i'm going to get a 50 to 140 you're talking about the same price range if you're going to the 100 to is it 100 to 400 people or 100 to, i think it's 100 to 400 the others and that is really really specifically to wildlife so that is it now this brings me to my personal reason why i chose to change lenses now anyone who is familiar with my station will know a couple of things i do live events but i do live events like live shows the 55 to 200 was not doing the trick when we were going into dark dark areas because a lot of times in a live show you can use a 55 to 200 you can you can use it you can stop down i have stopped down to six and uh, 11 sometimes in a live event because i focus in on the light that's on the stage and not necessarily the light that's ambient and around but the biggest problem is in a situation where you're doing live you want to set and forget therefore let's say you pick f4 or 3.5 and all of a sudden you see something you want to frame in and you zoom in, you're going to lose your F. So the settings you just had, you lost. And for that reason, I ha I really found out that with my Canon 70 to 200 L, I got really spoiled with that fixed F. A lot of shows I do it at 3.54 and sometimes 2.8, depending on the show. And so it was a real bonus for me to, um, uh, have that ability to set and forget and have my F go to where uh, I wanted it to be and not think about that and actually think about capturing the moment. Uh, therefore, I made the move. I sold the 55 to 200 for a good price. I took that cash and put it right on the um, 50 to 140. But I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> when I put the cash down, it was a real drop in the bucket. I mean, it's really expensive. Uh, so in Canada, we're talking like... Um, let me go over here screen plus me in canada let me go to i'll go to a site guys that you don't know they're pretty good on price uh gosling photo uh, fujinon 50 to 140. yeah look at this it's at 1869 oh my god yeah they brought it down it used to be at 2000 i bought it at 2049 minus 100 uh, therefore, you can see that it's you know it's it's not a cheap lens. So I I, I sent, sold my my uh, my 55 to for about 900, and then I went and bought this one. So it's kind of cool. Let me go over here, just me. So that's the deal, guys. That's that's where I I went with that and why I did what I did. I think it all boils down to a couple of small things, and if you check these elements out, you check the observations, you look at these. And you look at where you want to go, and it's very, very important, guys. Check your workflow before you go out and just buy the latest, greatest. Because I believe the 55 to 200 will solve a lot of people's problems out there. Uh, it, it's a great lens. It is a sharp lens, and it does a fantastic job. As soon as you pop in anything involving your F and your opening and iq that little edge you need for iq you might want to go for the 50 to 140 pay the thousand dollars more but it's not always the case so it's just something i thought would be good to mention uh listen um <clears throat> i hope you enjoyed this uh well, let me hear we go back let me go back to me here there we go i hope you guys enjoyed this it was uh basically my comments on where you should go with uh uh, your lenses and I hope you liked remember guys that uh, Jacques Gaines photography is all about the journey getting the shot and uh, it's uh, subscribe if you want to keep in tune with everything I do uh, just remember that I have lots of great 
behind the scenes uh, comments. I give you guys tips and tricks on how to do stuff. And uh, I have a lot of fun. I try to vlog and blog the, mo the most I can. I have a great thing coming out. Boudoir with Meg. Check it out on the station. Love you guys. Thank you so much, so much for watching. And don't forget everybody. Keep on making something from nothing.